You are welcome to Dave Total Academy, where we are devoted to building excellence in STEM education. In our video today, we are going to be looking at how to solve logarithmic equations with the scientific calculator. Now, you use your pen and paper to solve this so that you can know that what your calculator is giving you is actually the solution to the questions you are solving. So here, in this past question, we are given that log to base 2 of y raised to power 1 over 2 is equal to log to base 5 of 125 and we are to find the value of y. We are given some options, so our calculator is going to help us to pick the right option out of these four options that we are given. Now, as a rule of thumb, I make it a point of duty that whenever you want to go ahead to solve any question on an equation, maybe quadratic equation, exponential equation, logarithmic equation, polynomials, make sure you clear the setting and the memory of your calculator. And to do that, if you look at this button 9, on top you can see a clear function that is highlighted there. It is indicated in gray color and all the functions of the calculator, for you to activate the functions that are indicated in gray, you need to first press shift. So I'm going to press shift 9. You can see shift 9 is telling the calculator to prompt me that do I want to clear the setup or the memory or all. I want to clear all. So I press 3. The equal to sign will amount to yes. So I'm going to press equal to. And now to reset all, I am to press the AC key and this is the AC key. That is the first thing that you need to do whenever you want to work on equations on the scientific calculator. You are doing this because sometimes you have some values stored in the memory location of the calculator. And if you are going to use variables, that means that those values are going to be used to compute the final solution, which will not give you what you are looking for. So having done that, the other thing you need to know is that it is ideal, it is best that you use x as a variable. So even though the question is telling us to find the value of y, I'm going to use x and know that I'm solving for y. So with that, let's go ahead and input this equation into the calculator so that we can get our solution on the fly. Now, looking at the calculator, we have two logarithm buttons. This one, the log button, and this other one, the log to base of a particular value. Now, I'm not going to use this normal log because I'm having log to base 2 and log to base 5. This normal log is for log to base 10. So you need to know that. So for me to input this equation, I have log and the base is 2. And now I can press the fourth button. Now the variable y, I'm not using that, I'm using x. And to get x, if you look at this close bracket button, on top we have x in red. To activate that, I need alpha, okay? Alpha is the button that activates the red functions on calculator. So I press alpha, close bracket, and you can see that is x. Now this is raised to power 1 over 2. This is the button for raised to power. This is, okay? Now I know that 1 over 2 is the same as 0 0.5. But the intuition of the calculator allows me to input 1 over 2 even as a fraction. So I'm going to press this fraction button. And by the way, we also have a video tutorial on fractions. So you want to check that out so that you can use your scientific calculator in solving fractions. Check the video whose link is being flashed on top of this video. And the video link is also in the description. You can check that out. So we have our power to be 1 over 2. The numerator is 1. I'll press the forward button. The denominator is 2. And I'll press the forward button to come out of that fraction, which is the power. I'll also press another forward and you can see it's taking me to the level of variable x, okay, whose logarithm we are trying to find. But I want to go out of the bracket so that I can input the equality sign. So I'm pressing forward again. Then there are two equality signs on the calculator. If I'm to press this equality button, this equal to, the calculator will try and evaluate this function that I've just pressed on the calculator. And that's not what I want. I want to write equal to and continue inputting value into the calculator. So I'm going to use this other equality sign, which is highlighted in red on top of the calc button. And to activate that, I need to press alpha calc. And you can see alpha calc is what is giving me the equality sign. Then I want to press log to base 5 of 125. And this is the logarithm button. I'm going to use base 5. And I'm finding the log of 125. All right. Now, as a rule of thumb, it is ideal that you always check if the things you have been put into the calculator is correct. So I always make that a point of duty. I will check and recheck again. So seeing that I got all the input correctly, I now need to solve this. Now, how do you solve for this 
particular x in this type of question, what we are going to make use of is the solve function. Now, looking at this calc button, on top of the calc button, written in gray color, you can see solve. To activate that, we use shift. So, I'm going to press shift calc. And interestingly, the calculator is asking me that, do I want to solve for x? This zero that is being flashed on the calculator is telling me that the initial value the calculator is going to use to iterate for the value of x is zero. For those of you who are conversant with the newton raphson method or solving equations, this is exactly what the calculator is doing. It's going to do an iteration process and it needs an initial value. That initial value that the calculator wants to use is zero. Okay? We are still going to come to some questions that we will need to specify the initial value. But because we cleared the setting and the memory of the calculator, everything was defaulted to zero. So that's why it's taking zero. And I'm okay with that because looking at this question, I'm only looking for one answer. So to solve for x, take zero as initial value. I'm okay with that. Then I'm going to press the equality sign. And you can see the calculator took some time to solve for this. And afterward, it's giving me the solution as x is equal to 64. That is option D. One more thing we need to clarify. This LR that is showing on the display of the calculator, what does that mean? That is actually the margin for accuracy that the calculator is working with. You want to ensure that the value is always zero. If the value is not zero, some other value, you want to check your input that you really got everything right because that means that there is a margin for error. And with this, we have solved this particular question knowing that our answer is option D. Here we have another example that we are trying to solve and the first thing we need to do if you are following right is that we should clear the setup and the memory of the calculator and to do that we we'll press shift 9 and okay I want to clear all I press 3 equal to then to reset all I press the AC key and with that I've cleared all the things that have been done on the calculator I also want to clear my key lock so that you can see exactly what I'm inputting into the calculator so we can try this question now if you are actually following through with the other example that we do this should be a roller coaster for you but let's do it together but now i'm not going to use log to any base i'm going to use the ordinary log because i'm working in base 10. i could have used that and input 10 as a base but that is just flogging the horse i will just press log okay 6x minus 4 is the log i'm taking so i have 6 and to get x, I'm going to use alpha close bracket. So alpha close bracket is what is giving me x minus 4. And since I'm true with that, I can close my bracket. Then minus log 2. I can close that bracket. Is equal to, to get this equality sign, I use alpha calc. Just like I explained the other time. And that is equal to 1. As a rule of thumb, I always tell us, let's check to ensure that we didn't make any mistake. And it is confirmed that we didn't make any mistake. The only other thing that is left to do is just to solve for x. And to do that, we use the shift calc buttons, which will give us a function of solving for this. So I'm using shift calc. And again, the calculator is asking me that do I want to solve for x starting with an initial value of 0? I'm okay with that. And I'm going to press equal to... And here, yeah, the calculator is giving me the correct answer as 4. So, the correct answer to this question is 4. Okay, option C. That is the correct answer to this question. Now, look at this question. This is going to be interesting. It's different from the set of questions that we have been solving previously, in which we are only looking for a singular value of the variable that was being asked in the questions. In this particular question, which is a theory paper from further March 2014. We are given that log to base 2 of m all raised to power 2 minus log to base 2 of m raised to power 3 is equal to 10. And we have to solve for m. Now, I've done the solution for you to see. Okay, let's assume that you're also in the exam mode and you have solved and solved. How do you confirm that with the calculator to ensure that what you just calculated is correct? That's what we're going to be doing today. But look at the uniqueness here. We are having two answers. Let's see how the calculator is going to handle that. So let's input the question. So we have log to base 2 of m. Okay, look at the way this is given to us. 
it is allowed to base two of them is always to power two. So we have let me open my bracket log to base two. And I told us before the variable that we work with on the calculator is x. And to input x, we press alpha close bracket. Okay, that is x. Then I can go ahead and close that bracket and raise it to the power of 2. All right. Okay, then I can say minus log to base 2 of my variable. My variable is x. That is alpha close bracket raised to power 3. Now that is to power 3. I can just say it is this power raised to power 3. Okay. And then I'm press going out of that bracket. So you put the quality sign alpha calc is equal to 10. Now look at this. Look at the way I put the power, the raised to power 2, and look at the way I put the m to the power of 3. Now, those are two different things, but you need to actually put them correctly to be able to solve this question. And as we have checked and you have seen that everything is correct, you cannot go ahead to solve for the variable m in which we are inputting as x in our calculator. But remember, in the calculation that I did previously, I got m to be 1 over 4 or m to be 32. As a rule of thumb, I will advise that when you are doing your iteration, take the initial value to be less than the least value that you got and higher than the highest value that you got. Now, the least value is 1 over 4. The higher value is 32. Okay? So, I can say I want to solve for x shift calc and then 1 over 4 and 0. I think that's okay. I can use 0 as initial value for the iteration and if I press equal to okay now look at this x is 0 0.25 and of course 0 0.25 is the same as 1 over 4 okay 0 0.25 is the same as 1 over 4 but that is not the only answer we are looking for look at the other value that cal uh, my calculation gave me that m is 32 okay I want to use a value that's higher than 32 yes I want to use um 35 okay so I can say shift calc the same function that I input in the calculator, and I say take the initial iteration value as 35, and I press equal to, and look at this. The calculator is interesting, okay? I want you to build your provisions in the use of this calculator. It will make your work far more easy. It will make sure that that academic excellence, you can attain it, and you can see, using the right approach and having the right mastery of this calculator, this wonderful tool, you can easily get to solve so many things that you may not know that the calculator may do and that's why digital academy is there i want you to go ahead and subscribe to our channel and the best feedback we can get is by your subscription so please take a minute it's free of charge go ahead click the subscription icon click on the notification bell so that whenever i'm uploading a video you are going to get that video instantly and furthermore i want you to share with your friends do you know anybody that is having some challenge in any area that we are actually addressing on our channel, we want you to also share with them. Let's build this academic excellence in students and together we can make it pass. It's due to the academy and until next time, God bless you.